Hey everyone, welcome to another theory breakdown. Now, I usually talk about compositions, uh, color, value, that sort of thing, but I never really talked about anatomy and human movement, that sort of thing, so I figured it might be time for that. And of course, if I have to start somewhere, I have to start with gestures, because that's the foundation of what every character, every object, and literally everything that you do will consist of. It's the foundation. Now, gesture is the essence of movement in any character, object, or literally anything you draw. Now, this is a common misconception. A lot of people think that gesture is just a character, a human character, or maybe an animal, of course. But gesture exists in every life form possible, even synthetic life forms. Even if you have a plastic uh, object that man made, you're going to have gesture in them. And it's a matter of what type of gesture it is. It doesn't have to be this dynamic curve at all times. It just needs to capture the essence what of what something is. Now, art school and books will always teach people to draw dynamic poses, but why is that? Um, it's really to be able to tell students not to draw stiff poses. Um, now, it is a common habit for new art students to draw poses that are really stiff or over the um, simplified two vertical, two horizontal, uh, because it's easier. Um, a lot of cases we grow up drawing stick figures, and it is a lot harder to draw dynamic poses where the human body and the anatomy that you probably will learn in art school uh, in a matter that is more interesting. Um, what I'm trying to say is really when we're learning muscles and bones and stuff, it's a lot easier to just draw it from the book and not really morph it into something more natural. So, gesture for me, um, and, and like this is coming from an animation graduate as well, gesture for me it's just capturing movement properly for the purposes of what you're trying to portray. Um, that means that stiff poses are still acceptable in the right circumstances. And of course, dynamic poses are definitely welcome in certain situations. You can be too dynamic in your gesture, depending on what you're trying to do. You can be too stiff depending on what you're trying to do. And that is something that you have to keep in mind. And of course, the point is you have to be natural and never really think about whether something is too stiff or too dynamic. Perhaps you do, but the most important part is just ask yourself, is your character, is your object being natural in the situation that you've put them in? Um, so again, it's not about questioning whether something is too stiff or too dynamic. It's about being natural. Now, knowing when to use stiff gestures is equally as important as knowing when to, to use dynamic gestures. Something that I already talked about. And I will be analyzing a lot of artwork today just to show you what I mean. Now, inevitably, when, I, when we talk about gestures, people will always go into Disney. Now, Disney is the hallmark of where the, the animation style came from, of course, having a long history. We know that, yes, there are a lot of fundamentals of animation and art in general that came from Disney. Um, and a big part of it, of course, is the really dynamic 
uh, the the animation style of the old masters. So um, now I'm not here to criticize any of you think they do. They are obviously fantastic animators, and there's a reason why it works. And it definitely on screen as well. And when we're talking about cartoon characters, this is definitely one of the best parts about uh, the Disney style. So you notice that when we're thinking of gestures, we feel the... There's a lot to talk about when it comes to creating great gestures, um, but I just wanted to go over the really raw essence, the, the fundamental parts of it. Now, you see that Tarzan and the gorilla here, very dynamic, uh, definitely a very clear curve of just showing the uh, natural gorilla pose, the power pose. Now, this is, of course, exaggerated a little bit from how gorillas actually act in real life. But, of course, we're talking about cartoons. They do have to exaggerate and they have to really push what is natural in order to create a more dynamic feeling to their work. Now, we can go into more gestures here. Of course, Tarzan is a great example of what I like to study when it comes to dynamic posing. Um, very, it, you could watch the movie and 99% of the time, Tarzan would be in a very nice curve. And there's a lot of really nice things going on when it comes to, especially when it comes to power posing with Tarzan, very dynamic. Um, definitely look into that if you're looking for this just creating these awesome, dynamic, literally natural poses uh, inspired from the world of the, the animal kingdom. Um, now, you might think, well, all characters must be very, very dynamic, right? And it means that you always want to have dynamic poses, but that's not necessarily true because we can look into this character. Um, now, bear bear with me, I completely forgot what her name is, uh, on the top of my head, of course. But you notice that with her character, she's very subtle. Um, definitely not as dynamic as Tarzan. It goes to show that you do not need to make everything dynamic. Because there is a reason for having stiffer characters. And in this particular case, she is clearly very villainous. Um, she has to show power in the sense of very, very, uh, I guess, some villainous power. And a lot of cases you'll find that a lot of characters will be more vertical when it comes to that. Now, there is a very subtle tilt of the head here that allows for a... How do I say it? It's not a completely stiff pose, and in a way that because of the way she's uh, in, a, in the way she's tilting her head, she looks more natural to her character, despite the fact that yes, she is in a very, very um, uh, she's standing uh, in a very vertical uh, pose. Now, of course, when it comes to Disney, there are ways to break up the verticality of. A character. So, for this instance, you see very nice arm movement here, pointing towards it, and of course, we can go back into the tilt of the head. So, while it is a stiffer pose, um, it is not necessarily a stiff pose, if that makes sense. Um, and of course, it's a perfect balance between just being subtle and being being uh, stiff and being dynamic. You can. Start going to Japanese illustrators, also a huge influence of mine. Now, in this particular case, Yoshitaka Amano really wanted to create a very dynamic composition. And this character is clearly moving in the air with this weird horse thingy. So you notice that there is a beautiful gesture going on. And even the cloak here creates, let's use a different color for that very very nice movement going on and everything it's very curvy you'll find that with a lot of the models work um you can definitely take this beyond just 
the animation realm. You can take these fundamentals into illustration work. And you'll find that a lot of illustrators can be very stiff or they can be very dynamic depending on what is required. Um, generally speaking, a lot of people um, will have their own uh, level of how dynamic they want their characters to, to be. A model tends to be very, very curvy, very dynamic. Um, other illustrators I'll talk about will be the same. Um, now we're just going to start hitting towards more subtle territory. In this case, fashion illustration, we're talking simplified uh, characters and in a way um, taking from reality, how would I say it? And it's not necessarily about, uh, it's not necessarily about being too dynamic, even though fashion models tend to move in a very dynamic way to really show off the fashion. So in this case, um, hopefully YouTube doesn't really penalize me for having a nipple out here on this woman, but uh, for artistic purposes, uh, this kind of works. So you see how there is a nice flowing curve and you'll find this a lot with fashion models moving through uh, the catwalk. Um, again, perfectly dynamic, uh, perfectly stiff at the same time. Doesn't need to be crazy, it just needs to be natural. Now let's look into an illustration that might not be as dynamic. And this is Miranda Meeks and her work in a lot of cases is very traditional illustration uh, work. And in this case, very it, like it's just, it's just a standing woman, right? It's not really a dynamic look to it, but there doesn't need there doesn't need to be a very dynamic pose in this case. It's just there there's a beauty in having a very iconic, very standing pose, a very vertical pose. There are places for this, and again, there are ways to break the shape of the pose to make it more dynamic despite the fact that she is standing still. So notice how the hands are very, very nice, um, very nice curve going on. Of course, you can see how wavy the hair is to really break up the shape of the overall verticality of the character. So use these tricks. Well, I wouldn't say tricks. Use this type of natural posing in order to um, break up the shape of your uh, vert, maybe a standing character. And in a lot of cases, you'll find that in an illustration, you'll need to have standing characters. You're not always going to have these crazy dynamic Tarzan poses. You don't need it. Um, now, of course, we can go back into uh, anime as well. Um, in this particular case, um, this is interpretation of Near Automata. Very dynamic. Um, in a way, very sassy. Um, personally, um, I, I chose this not because I like this particularly, but because it it's a you'll you'll find that to be um, the character can be more subdued, so she's not necessarily always in dynamic poses, but there is a little bit of sass to her, and in this illustration's case, it kind of exaggerates the sass the sexiness behind her. So you'll, you'll see that, yes, there is a very nice, um, uh, yeah, I would say contrapostal pose. Um, very, very, you, you'll find this a lot in anime. Just the nice, contrapostal, by the way, is just when the axes of the shoulders and the hips are creating um, this sort of uh, angle angling, and it creates a very, You'll find that when people are trying to create more interesting standing poses, they'll do this with their work. And of course, you can see, look at 9S at the back here. It's, again, it's not necessarily a very dynamic pose, but it's more dynamic than just simply standing in a vertical state. Um, now, I don't want to go too far into anime. I just use this because, again... Sometimes a lot, of, a lot of times rather, a lot of illustrators kind of use the tilt of the head in order to break a otherwise very vertical posing. Um, again, you can draw stand, people standing still. Is people are not going to blame 
you for doing so is a matter of context is a matter of just having little things to break up break it up and oh actually i forgot to mention a lot of cases illustrators use stuff like brush strokes and the way they render the pose in order to create a more dynamic composition um now let's go into a very Disney-esque, very cartoonish style. Um, this is Alex Troll. I know it sounds very close to my real name, but this guy is definitely very different. Um, now you'll see that uh, I chose this particular piece because it goes to show there are levels to dynamicism. So for instance, again, a very vertical pose. Nobody is going to blame Alex Troll here for having a vertical a woman here um but he breaks it up with nice arm movement um and uh oh and one thing of course you you are going to be limited by the objects themselves so you see that look at the staff here it's not like he can bend the staff but he tilts the staff a little bit to help towards the overall posing um because he, that this woman is holding the staff, it means that it has to be part of it um, in, in its gesture. So this is something that a lot of people kind of forget. If an object is part of the character, you want to bring it into your character design. The character posing itself, don't see it as separate. So in this particular case, you see that, uh, I'm going to use a different color here, the staff here is tilted slightly from the verticality of the woman so it avoids a situation where you have two very vertical lines which creates an overtly vertical um, pose which is not good now of course you can look into the character here um, and of course the wolves themselves are very nicely curved and much more dynamic than everything else in this particular piece um, and one other thing before I forget, there is a nice uh, um, gesture with the branches here. Um, again, trees, you can't really get away with having really... You can't get away with just having these crazy dynamic trees. In most cases, they are going to be vertical. So let's not try to exaggerate too much. You'll probably have to use branches to really break up the shapes. Again, use what you have in disposal to, I, again, sometimes you're just forced to have these stiff objects, but you want to just have little things here and there, the features of them in order to break it up. So then we get into another illustra illustrator I love, Yoji Shinkawa. Again, you don't have to have these crazy dynamic poses in your illustration work. You could be defined by, in uh, you can be defined by very often very stiff posing in your work, but uh, in Yoji Shinkawa's case, he breaks it up by having these nice brush strokes. I'm not going to draw every one of them. So the brush strokes in this case is very dynamic. He doesn't have these characters as dynamic and that's a big difference he's using tools of his own style in order to make it more interesting um, something to keep in mind now I want to finish off with Rembrandt now I've heard before from people that fine artists have these stiff characters doesn't work right in no way would you ever tell Rembrandt if he was still alive that his work was not good. Um, his characters were not good. Again, you have to go back into necessity, what is required for your piece. So when it comes to Rembrandt's work, you're not really looking for his crazy dynamic Tarzan poses. His characters are very subtle. I wouldn't even say characters. I guess figures rather. It's, he's bringing his what he observes into the fine art world. And a lot of cases, why does he need to make these crazy poses? Um, portraits, especially, are very um, tend to be very static. It, it doesn't need to be dynamic, and. In a way, you're still capturing the essence of the figure.
despite the fact that, yes, it might be a stiff pose, quote-unquote, um, which, to conclude again, know when to use stiff poses, know when to use dynamic gestures, you need to know what the purpose of that character is, rather than think, oh, I just need to spam all these curves, because in a lot of cases, if, if it's done in the wrong context, it just looks bad. Um, hopefully that makes sense. I may talk about gestures more, just talk about how to create these dynamic poses exactly, and, and how to break up stiff gestures type of thing. But I think I've got my point across. Um, again, always think purpose and being natural. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.